Well, I'm so excited to have today a uh, special guest composer, Natalie Holt, who was just nominated for Outstanding Original uh, Main Title Theme Music and Outstanding Music Composition for a series for Loki. Natalie, welcome to the Sound Wars Collection of podcast. Hi. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. We we find you today in uh in LA. Um you just came off of Comic-Con. What was the energy like coming uh from from that experience? Oh, it was it was great. Like and um just such a thrill to get to meet Michael Giacchino. I'm literally like met all my composer heroes this year. <laughs> it's like quite overwhelming. And what is it like meeting uh you know like that's the hardcore fans. That that is your audience. I mean, those are the people that are huge, you know, Star Wars, Marvel, the, you know, the franchise of the IPs, the characters that you've composed for, what is it like to meet them face to face? Yeah, you just, you know, realize, like, how big a deal it is for people and like seeing everyone dressing up and what, you know, like, what the community is, um, and how much it impacts people's lives. So um, yeah, it's really cool. And I think it's been a while since Comic Con has been in person as well. So it felt like a really special event for everyone. Yeah. Um, for you, I, I think you've had just a fantastic year. I mean, coming off of Obi-Wan, um, you know, to me, I think it was the most anticipated show coming in, into this year with like, as we start to work our way out of, you know, I think a lot of the um, bottlenecks with the pandemic of things kind of being delayed, not knowing when they're going to be released. What does it, what does it feel like to have a little distance now from, uh, you know, those six episodes? Yeah, it, it, it's, um, it's just kind of been a bit of a whirlwind year really because you know with Loki and Obi-Wan within a year of each other it's just like oh I've done a Marvel thing wow and then like <laughs> and a Star Wars um property so yeah it's it's, it's great um and, and it was quite a compressed timeline on that so it was kind of short sharp and then out <laughs> and out yeah uh, how much time have you spent just um, spending uh, w- uh, once a project is done revisiting any of that work? Are you pretty much the type of person that can walk away with the project and feel really satisfied and kind of feel like you, you know, what you set out to do was completed? Or do you ever go back and revisit uh, any of your previous work? Um, I feel like I find it really hard to let go and l- like those small mixed decisions at the end you know when you're when you're mixing a cue and it's like oh I think we need a bit more you know voice or whatever it's just those micro decisions at the end and I always feel like if I didn't have a deadline I would just carry on tweaking them and that's probably really annoying for my engineers that I work with but um yeah it's sort of I guess it's good to have these tight deadlines because otherwise we'd probably be you know wafting around tweaking things forever um but yeah I don't tend to revisit I don't kind of sit there and and actually well that's not true because often you have to rebalance things for the soundtrack album so that's quite nice because you know I came back and did the soundtrack album for Obi-Wan Kenobi like um you know a a month later so it was it was kind of nice to re-listen to everything and appreciate like how brilliant the orchestra were Um, And then just rebalance things a little bit. So because sometimes you'll be mixing it so that it's on TV and this is you're mixing things for people to listen to. So it's a bit of a different um, process, but or process, as you say. So, Um, so yeah, I guess revisiting it when when I make the albums is probably and then then it's like that that's gone and in the past and on to the next thing. Can you remember or describe the experience of when, you know, the season is released um, and just that feeling, knowing that you've been, you've been, cher- you know, moving this project along for a long period, some, some shorter than longer. I, 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 my understanding is that the sh- Obi-Wan was a shorter than Loki, obviously. Loki was about a year or so. So is there a difference of feeling for you releasing a, a project depending on how long you work on it? Definitely. I think, um, I mean... I had a year on Loki. Um, so because of pandemic, like I, I don't think, I think it was unusual because they, they were filming and then they got, I think three months um, off. So Kate Heron, the director and I kind of developed the, um, the suite and all the themes and the kind of color palette for the show in that three month period which is just a really long development period on, on in for most projects. 
um, and a real treat to to kind of get that time and get Kate's attention. So, um, yeah, when she went back to film after the lockdown was eased up, um, you know, they had all those, they had the Loki theme and Tom Hiddleston was listening to it and walking around to it on set. So that's always the dream when you, when you can do something and have it be part of the process early on. Um, and obviously, yeah, Obi was a little bit more rushed because I only had three months on it. So um, that's probably more normal, but it, it just, it's that development time. It didn't, you didn't quite, we didn't quite have the same um, time to play, I suppose, but you know, it, it, we, we also had the kind of um, John Williams of it all with, with his kind of writing the Obi theme and making sure we were, you know, striking a balance between the traditional Star Wars and bringing something new. So they were both just very different projects and yeah different timelines yeah what do you appreciate about being living in london obviously working in la you know or wherever you need to go but how does that separation uh work maybe with your benefit or how does it help support your process does it provide any additional space or just not having to wake up every day and walk out the door and be in la or um oh my gosh i just wish that london and la were not so far away from each other honestly (laughs) because i love it here like there's such brilliant things about both places like I love you know friends and the sort of uh, you know the mixture and the culture and the you know these you've got these sort of ancient buildings around in London that there, that there aren't in in LA and but yet you have the sunshine and you know a great it's it's a much more kind of focused community in LA as well because it's so much more this town is is for film and for the industry on the whole um and i feel i really appreciate the kind of composer community that you um that you guys have here um i think it's all a bit more spread out in london but yes what can i say it's 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 straddling between the two (laughs) it's kind of working at the moment the role of a composer is a very singular experience to start off and then it becomes more um collaborative and you incorporate more musicians and obviously like you know, as you, the mixed process and everything that goes down the line. Um, can you describe your personal uh, experiences of going from a singular to incorporate more people? Can you let go of the reins and collaborate, especially now working on such big projects like Loki and Obi Wan? What, what has it taught you about the process? Yeah, it's when you're starting out and you haven't got big budgets to play with, and you're just, you know, doing short films, you 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 don't have have the resources to be able to often even employ musicians you're just having to create something with what you can play and samples and um and your music editor and producer and you're doing everything yourself so it's it's um it sort of gets easier like as you you get more help as you as you get um onto bigger projects and you know marvel had had a huge team like around there was five music editors so um you know, you have you have this big team of people, and you're running. You've got a lot of people to kind of bounce ideas off as well, um, which can be good and bad, I suppose. It's it's um it, it, sometimes it's difficult when there's lots of opinions flying around and what things shouldn't shouldn't be. But um, yeah, I think I've always because I, so I went to the National Film and Television School, and I assisted um, a composer, Martin Phipps. He's, he scored The Crown recently and many other things. He's fantastic. And I assisted him f- for about, I don't know, three or four years. And he's very collaborative. And I think he he just feels that, you know, a com- sitting in a room on your own is, is, is kind of a lonely, unrewarding experience. And Martin's always just bringing musicians in and bringing other composers in and, and you know, just kind of, making it collaborative and I think coming through that kind of school um you know it's that's kind of I was like yeah that's how I want to work it's it's nice to to feel part of a a bigger thing and it's 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 so great to have musicians like brings like you you know you come up with a line and then you invite someone in to come and play it and they'll they'll kind of put uh, give it a magic like a kind of oh that that's what I wrote, but the way they've played it has just elevated it, you know? So it, it's just kind of, um, yeah, I love a collaborative way of working. 
I feel like, you know, getting, finding inspiration, finding that thread, which will kind of kickstart the whole process to get you moving forward. Um, do you find that it's harder to get in, in, into projects knowing kind of what's the, just the added pressure of the, the IP, the titles, the platform, you know, the expectation really that goes along with these? Does that, does that, does that change how you kind of get into your projects? I just think, um, for me like when I'm trying to be creative and come up with something it's like if I if I allow myself to feel the pressure of like oh millions of people are going to watch this and judge it and you know I wouldn't be able to write anything so I have to just ignore that a bit and I, I can't I mean obviously with with Star Wars I had to think about it more because because I was writing in a in a way that I wanted to kind of blend with what John Williams had done and, and be respectful for what for, of what he'd done and lead to his um, episode six, kind of when the themes were coming back in. Um, so I guess I was more aware of the legacy um, with Star Wars, but yeah, with, with Marvel, I was just trying to, and Kate Heron, the director was brilliant. She, we kind of were in our own bubble and I think everyone was because of COVID and it, you, you're just sitting in your room and you're just, coming up with something that you enjoy and that this person you know you're it, it's just a kind of simple communication between you and the director and then um yeah I think it, you can't think about those pressures otherwise it just stifles your creativity and freedom <laughs> so with that being said that I added a layer I, I I just my son is now 15 months old I am now just realizing that my previous life is not how my future life will be when it comes to time and priorities and, um, you know, raising a child. And, you know, with your daughter, uh, she's seven, eight. How old is she now? Eight. Yeah, she just turned eight. Eight years. OK, OK. I'm, I have a few years until my, my son will be that age. But what how, how do you think, you know, the balance of family and work has influenced your process? You, you know, being able to be able to be present in both and how they inform each other. So I think it's just makes you prioritize what's important um I, I look back at my 20s early 30s when I was um now I'm revealing how old I am but uh you know you just work all night just you know do crazy you know like yeah I'll take this short film no money like whatever you just kind of want to throw yourself in and do loads of projects and you know now I'm like actually I'd rather say no to this thing because I want to be able to take Annie to this th school for you know I don't want to kind of like it's I made it I make sacrifices to like I had to come and and record in LA so I was here for two months and my daughter was at school so that's a big sacrifice but it's kind of like all right I feel that it's worth it on this project but I'm always weighing up like the sacrifice of time with with her with with the importance of a, of a job I suppose which so yeah priorities which change as you grow and and have a family yeah who who to you when when you were coming through the university or, or uh, um thinking about going from a violinist to becoming a po composer who was a role model to you or a mentor um uh, who, who was a female not necessarily a male but i, I asked that because uh, there hasn't been a tradition of having female composers and it's it's only been in the past you know 10 15 20 years that we've seen this become more of a common um, occurrence, which I think we need more of and we need more representation across the board. And it's so exciting to have these opportunities for, for everyone. What, what, who, who to you gave you that first initial inspiration to pursue becoming a, you know, a film composer and TV composer? Um, I guess that was the, you know, I remember going to watch um, Chocolat and seeing like, oh, uh, Rachel Portman's name and and then um when I was at film school what did we see it was the black box it was a Paul Verhoeven uh movie which you know like you just kind of as a undergraduate it's like you, you get invited into the studio sometimes and that was Anne Dudley um who was uh recording that I don't even think she'd remember that I'd ever met her but yeah I sat in the back of the of the studio for like an hour or something and, and watched her work and she's kind of fiercely clever and you know she's um that, that was quite inspiring so I mean there are women who've been you know she won an Oscar about 15 years ago or something for uh Full Monty so 
there are female figures but um i feel that it's becoming more much more common and you know although i think this year's oscar nominations were still only only the men <laughs> it's still made, it's like but you know mid mid level projects and emmys there's there seem to be a good number of women nominated for emmys this year like nanita desai and jessica jones as well have been nominated for in the music categories so things are improving what what to you is most exciting just about the current state of TV and film music? I feel like um, something that I heard you talk about, which is what you described as like the unconscious nature kind of a storytelling um, where you can be a little, you don't have to be out so f- out front and so traditional. Um, but what, you know, what has it allowed you knowing that the rules are kind of, they're not set in stone, that there's opportunity to explore different types of textures or emotions? Yeah, I just, I feel like you're always working on on these two different levels of like um sometimes you want your music just to be underneath like a sort of subconscious almost textural kind of uncomfortable feeling or whatever you're not adding something that's not above the above the story and then sometimes you want you want something that's on top of what's going on and and you know something memorable that's that's announcing itself that's like its own character in a project but I think it's always just um a balancing act of working with the director and and you know that's what I love about our job as as a composer is just the collaborative nature of it when you know when you see when you're in the dub and you've been working on the music for such a long time then you suddenly see all the foley and all the kind of ADR and and the color grade and everything and you just it just comes alive and it's not just it's not just what you're doing it's just the whole a whole team of people working on a thing and it's just really powerful to be kind of part of something for for a certain period of time a project it's it's the magic of the job yeah um looking back i mean you've had some time uh, some distance was again also from the sh- from your transitioning from short films like you mentioned going into episodics a, a lot a lot of times you know from smaller three seasons, six episodes, 20 episodes. Like, I think you kind of explored different ranges of series. What to you is still kind of untapped? What what, what would you like to to work in next? What what would be an exciting opportunity for you, do you think? What are you excited about? Um, well, I suppose the last couple of projects have been sort of superhero uh, oriented. So, um, yeah, maybe it would be nice to come back to some like a, a a drama I don't know I mean I'm, I just feel so lucky I, I I guess it's all about sort of the director and the script and everything and it's just you know um being excited about a project <laughs> that's the main the main thing I'm looking for I suppose do, do you find that in terms it wasn't say in terms of how relationships are started like you know looking back I look at your from Beckham House Nightfall uh you know um, dead water fell that period of time when you're you've been doing so much work you've had like an incredible track record of consistently delivering these fantastic series uh but not really have the platform that loki provides what what do you changes what how, how does how do you feel like this is maybe not even a first maybe like the first act of your career because of of the exposure aspect of loki yeah it's definitely kind of changed my life i would say like the kind of things i'm being considered for now and and like you know I meet people and they're like oh what do you do and you thought oh I did Loki and they've actually heard of it because you know (laughs) I think sadly I mean not sadly it just is what it is but um you know and there's amazing composers working on 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 dramas but it's kind of like if they're not seen and you know um you know it can have a fantastic score there's there's so many things that that have a brilliant score. Like um, I was watching the Andy Warhol uh, documentary on Netflix the other day and I was just thinking, my gosh, there's such a brilliant score. Um, and, you know, it's just great when you, when you, there's all these interesting people coming up doing docs and, you know, I'm sure they're all kind of leading on to great places, but it's just, yeah, it's, it's, it's finding that project that, that um, gives you that platform that lots of people get to hear your work and, um, get excited by it so yeah it's, it's changed my life it's it's Lo- loki's been been amazing <laughs> how 
how far can you plan out? I know a lot of times composers, you know, they'll say, oh, I have a film coming out, you know, this year and next year. And I kind of know what I'm doing for the next maybe, you know, six to 12 or 18 months. How, how far can you think out in, in front of, uh, in terms of guiding, like you said, uh, being more selective, picking and choosing where your time and energy goes, but how far do you like to think out in terms of when you're not on a deadline, you know, guiding your career, take, building in breaks? What, how would you describe the ebb and flow of, of your life now, uh, being in the position that people are reaching out to you and you don't have to be, you know, looking for your next project. I mean, I mean you always have to think about your next project, but uh, I'm just worried about the future as much. Like how far do you, how, how far do you like try to think out? Yeah, I suppose just prioritize time with my daughter because she's eight and you just, you know, it, it goes so fast when you have a child. It's like, whoa, like these, these, you see like eight, eight years of your life and, you know, they go past and you can kind of measure them against the growth of a human being. It's kind of crazy. Um, so, yeah, I suppose it's just balancing interesting work projects with with making sure I get to spend time with her as well. <laughs> Um, I don't want to kind of, uh, I think I was talking to um, Carter Burwell, we did a panel together and I think some composers are really happy to just work on lots of things at the same time. And um, I've tried to do that a bit, like some, there's been some overlap with things, but it's generally not pleasurable. And I like to really, like the thing that was such a joy with Loki was just sort of feeling like I was, living in that world and like completely kind of in with that character and in in that headspace of a project um and just feeling a synergy with it and I just feel like I don't know because I haven't done it but if you have loads of things going on at the same time I can't imagine having that deep connection with a project so yeah I think it's just making sure that don't take too much on and that things remain exciting and you can kind of give everything your your best work yeah that's great advice but is, is there any additional advice you'd give yourself uh maybe 10 15 years ago what would you tell natalie back then what what things you can walk away you don't need to think about anymore or what you know what what tip would you give yourself yeah i, I guess i was i've always just been quite <laughs> anxious that like oh god i i'm you know not gonna yeah i i suppose it's been it's that thing where you get a job and then you're like, how am I going to come up with something new for this? And it's that period at the beginning of a job where you just feel this anxiety of like, Oh God, I've got a blank page. Um, but it's kind of like, that's part of the process as well. I think that I'm starting to realize. And it's like, you have to sort of embrace the uncomfortableness of that early stage of a project. And then it almost starts to kind of, it's like, riding a bike it, once you sort of get going it it kind of takes off and it always gets easier um so yeah I, I don't know if that's good advice <laughs> but it's just like being more familiar with the process and and what you need to um make your process work as well I think it's really important to understand what you need as a composer and creative person to to do deliver your best work yeah um uh Lastly here, you know, you both with Obi-Wan and Loki, obviously pre-existing IPs and characters and, you know, the shadow of John Williams is omnipresent and the characters like there's a lifetime behind us of these of li of having these characters in our world. Um, what have you found in terms of your process of trying to be true to yourself and your voice and, and what your vision is and protecting um, or being, you know, um, I guess... Uh, being conscious that there is a legacy here, but um, how, 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 what's your what's your your tip to others of knowing that your voice is important and that you should protect it, and that you you know you were hired for this these projects because of your unique voice, but then you also have the shadow of you know the IPs and whatnot. How do you how do you stay true to both? Oh well, I mean we, we you have your kind of what like a ideal work situation don't you and and sometimes I feel like it switches to just like if there's a deadline and you know you're kind of like okay we have to just get this over the line and sometimes you you know it just it's just everything it, I, I always feel like that stuff is quite variable on on just kind of uh yeah I guess this the, the <laughs> 
<laughs> like if you've got a, a deadline and stress looming over you. Um, sometimes it can be really motivating. And, you know, sometimes I write my best work, like when I'm just quickly rushing to get something over to orchestration. Um, but yes, it, it, it was uh, definitely slightly terrifying to when I landed that job at the beginning it took me a minute to just like oh my god I'm totally like doing working on Star Wars and just to get my head around it and relax into 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 the job it took it took a minute but yeah was it was it not into the premieres for these shows that you had a chance to see it uh, experience it with an audience or in a theater since these are streaming shows yeah so um I had watched it. We'd I'd been in, remoting into Skywalker Ranch where they'd been doing the dub, um, so I had kind of seen. Uh, you know, I always quite like to be in on the dub and just check that the music isn't like too quiet. Generally, like, can we turn the music up, please? That's kind of what I tend to say to people. But um, yeah, it was amazing because we we had the Star Wars celebration at the um, Anaheim Convention Center. So I think it was like a a forty thousand it's like a um you know a sports stadium just full of star wars fans um watching watching the sh the first two episodes so that was incredible and you know hearing them laughing and just reacting to it and enjoying it was it was great yeah i find that sometimes experiencing your work with an audience is kind of the can be the um the most gratifying aspect of of the pro of all the blood blood sweat and tears <laughs> you went through to know that you know, the people that you, th you know, are going to be experiencing this, it, it is being received what you're putting out there. So yeah, that's so exciting. And obviously, like, um, John Williams was there as well. So I got to chat to him in the dressing room, which is like, I'm glad. So I, they, they wanted it to be a surprise um, that he was there. But I'm glad I, I knew that he was going to be there. So I had time to prepare myself. Because I think if I just, you know, met him unexpectedly, I would have been a mess. <laughs> He's kind of um, the reason I got into film composing, um, you know, his ET scores and, you know, he's he's an incredible, uh, incredible figure in our industry. So it was yeah, amazing to get to work with him and, and meet him this year. It's just been a dream. Well, I'm so grateful and excited. Um, congratulations again. I mean, both on both of these nominations, I feel like uh, even though Loki came out, you know, back in 2021, we're still there's still audiences that are celebrating and ex and experiencing it for the first time. I remember when I watched it the first time. It's there's nothing quite like watching any of these series the first time through. That's why I was asking initially, do you go back and rewatch your work? Because sometimes you might, and you know, then you can kind of look at it with a different perspective. But um, yeah, for anyone who hasn't had a chance, definitely check out Loki and Obi Wan Kenobi both on Disney Plus. And uh, Natalie, thank you so much for your time and congratulations again. I'm, I'm so excited Aww, for, what's, for Batgirl and what's next for you. Uh, yeah. Yeah, Loki season two. <laughs>